Welcome back to the second part of my analysis of The Force Awakens. In this part, I'm exploring the action of the film. More specifically, I'm talking about the moments in which a lightsaber is used in combat, examining how it works in comparison to previous installments. Also, after watching this video, check out Robohead's video on lightsabers and Disney. Link in the description down below. It's a great video exploring similar things discussed here. Lightsaber battles are a key component of any Star Wars film. The Force Awakens features one lightsaber on lightsaber battle, and one other moment where a lightsaber is simply used in combat. Firstly, I want to go over the characters who wield a lightsaber in this film. Kylo Ren was trained by both Luke Skywalker and Snoke, establishing him as someone trained by accomplished masters in the ways of the Force and lightsaber combat. As a former Stormtrooper, Finn may have been trained in close combat, but is never confirmed within the film. He states that he worked in sanitation and only took part in one mission, in which he was never shown to use a melee weapon. His former comrade FN2199, the one that shouts traitor, is shown wielding a Z6 riot control baton, which can withstand the power of a lightsaber. Rey is a simple scavenger who can wield a staff and defend herself against small thugs, but has no training with a lightsaber or the force. We have no reason to believe she could possibly use mind tricks and wield a lightsaber, given that she only learnt the truth about the force a few hours before utilising it. Some may argue that Luke undergoes the same situation in A New Hope. That is incorrect, as Luke was instructed by Obi-Wan on the essence of the Force and how to reach towards it. When training with the lightsaber on the Millennium Falcon, when training with the lightsaber on the Millennium Falcon, he tells Luke to act on his instincts and stretch out with your feelings, as your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. This relates to a later scene in the film, where Luke trusts his instincts and reaches out towards the Force, assisting him in successfully destroying the Death Star. No such setup and payoff is given to Rey's character and skills regarding lightsaber combat and the Force in The Force Awakens. During the production of the original trilogy, Mark Hamill, who plays Luke Skywalker, asks George Lucas why Luke doesn't just use one hand as he fights with the lightsaber. It allows for more complex fight scenes to occur. This was a part of the featurette on the lightsaber, as follows. Off and then made it into a lightsaber. George was adamant that these things were really, really heavy, that we couldn't take a hand off. We always had to have two, it was like Excalibur, it was 40, 50 pounds of weight. They were very powerful, they had a lot of energy in them, and so that was, you, you know, you worked with them as if they were heavy, so that, because when they crashed together they you know, made these big explosions and all kinds of things. As we went on, we wanted to have the lightsaber fights become faster and more intense as Luke became more proficient in the art of sword fighting. And so we very slowly started moving away from the two-handed form, which is more oriental, to sometimes using a one-handed form, and it's progressed further and further into a more two-handed and one-handed form. But originally it was that you needed two hands to hold on to this lightsaber because of the amount of energy that is uh, being swung around. This answers why an untrained wielder cannot properly use a lightsaber, as almost every force user does in the prequel trilogy. The Jedi during the period before the Empire were trained from a very young age, so how is it that a First Order Stormtrooper and a scavenger from Jakku can both wield a lightsaber with such proficiency? I know what some people may say, Finn was trained in combat, so he can use it and Rey uses a staff. But how does that change things? In A New Hope, Luke says he bullseyes Womp Rats on Tatooine. But that's not what helped him blow up the Death Star. The Force was what he used. He's also the son of a great Jedi Knight. Rey is not, and as this film does not share her lineage, she has no special heritage and no reasonable explanation for her skills. To say that Finn and Rey train in using melee weapons quite different to a lightsaber does not support them being able to use a lightsaber in combat. Now, let's break down the lightsaber fights itself. The first battle takes place on Takodana. It's a very short fight between FN2199 and Finn. After being given Luke's lightsaber by Mars, Finn asks for a weapon, not knowing that he was given one. Already, it is established that Finn does not know what a lightsaber is. He then proceeds to join the battle. After stabbing a stormtrooper through the chest, Finn hears the word traitor. Turning to see his former comrade and training partner FN2199 standing not far away, disarming his blaster and shield to activate his riot control baton. The fight starts off well, with Finn being pushed backwards as he struggles to defend himself. However, a few seconds later, Finn manages to block an attack without staggering and he does so with only one hand on the lightsaber hilt. He then proceeds to be pushed back again, finally attempting to strike his foe. Once again, he uses one hand, then two and is pushed back again. Regaining his stance, Finn jabs towards FN2199 with one hand on the hilt, 
His attack is blocked, but he follows it up with a second attack, this time with two hands. It is blocked again. His third attack leads to the lightsaber locking on with the baton. He pushes down onto FN2199, but is then pushed back again, finally staggering so much as to allow FN2199 to get a direct hit on Finn, sending him flying backwards towards the ground. Before FN2199 can land a final blow, he's shot by Han Solo. Now, let's analyze the fight. Finn is clearly shown to be at a disadvantage. He staggers back three times and lands only a few hits, all of which are blocked. As he's never wielded a lightsaber before, it's fine that he loses, but he was able to use the weapon several times with one hand. That should not be possible, especially for someone untrained in the Force. The reason why a Jedi or Sith can use a lightsaber with such proficiency is due to the Force guiding them. I counted Finn to have used one hand on the saber hilt four times. The first time he uses one hand, he staggers back. The second, he successfully defends an attack, while the third and fourth time, his attacks are blocked. Ultimately, the fight should have ended way quicker than it did, with Finn not being able to successfully wield the saber. Along with this, had FN2199 not thrown away his blaster, he could have shot Finn, and without the force, Finn wouldn't have been able to defect the blaster ball. I understand why he wouldn't though, as to fight the traitor head on. Altogether, this fight is alright at best. It is short and illogical. Finn losing makes sense, but was done so for dramatic purposes, rather than the writers knowing that Finn shouldn't win the first time he wields a lightsaber. Some may compare Finn using a lightsaber to Pre Vizsla, a Mandalorian from the Clone Wars animated series, in which he wields the Darksaber and uses it in combat against Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Darth Maul, and more. The reason why it's fine for Pre Vizsla to successfully use the saber without the Force is because it is hinted at that he has had the saber for a while, being able to train with it. He also uses his Mandalorian technology to assist him. His jetpack allows him to move about with quick precision, his blasters can be switched out at any moment, and we actually see him use the saber over the course of several months and possibly a year or two. There's sufficient reasoning provided on screen as to support why Pre Vizsla can use a lightsaber, unlike Finn. Now, let's move on to the lightsaber battle itself. This takes place on Starkiller Base, shortly after Han's death. Kylo Ren is severely injured by Chewbacca's bowcaster bolt, Finn has shown that he can wield a lightsaber, and Rey has been revealed to be force sensitive. The most important thing to note is that Kylo is injured, hence his ability to wield a lightsaber is hindered. Before lightsabers clash, Kylo Ren is shown to be bleeding severely as a result of his injury. He manages to force push Rey, knocking her out. In anger, Finn ignites his lightsaber and charges at Kylo. Like the last fight, Finn is slowly being pushed back. Kylo wields his lightsaber using one hand, reminiscent of Darth Vader, who Kylo has been revealed to idolize. As it should be, Kylo pushes Finn back until he falls. Kylo takes a second to hit his wound, then easily dodges Finn's next few attacks. He appears to be playing with Finn, not taking him as seriously as he could. The fight leads to Finn being pressed against a tree, and Kylo puts his lightsaber hilt to great use, as the cross guards sink into Finn's shoulder. As Finn screams in pain, Rey begins to wake up. Kylo goes in for a slash, but Finn dodges. He spins away and manages to hit Kylo in the right shoulder. This makes sense since Kylo was not taking the fight seriously. He then easily defends himself from Finn's attacks, throwing the lightsaber out from Finn's hand, punching him and slashing him across the back. Finn is knocked out instantly. Here ends the first half of the fight. Finn is easily defeated after Kylo takes the fight seriously. It's a fine, entertaining battle, although the issue of Finn being able to easily wield the saber in combat is still present. Kylo extinguishes his saber and reaches out to call Luke's saber towards him. It flies past him and lands within Rey's hand. She used the force to pull the saber towards her. Once again, the reason why I didn't go to Kylo can be explained by his injuries, although that is a stretch. The fight quickly begins again. A lot of cuts make the fight seem more intense and fast-paced. Rey uses the saber in a staff-like motion, opting for stabs and flowing slashes. Kylo appears to be taking the fight more seriously, already having an interest in Rey's powers and now being tested by her in a fight. He moves around a lot more and continues to push Rey back. As the two enter a narrow path, the intensity amplifies. Kylo pushes harder and harder, his attacks coming off as furious, but Rey either dodges or blocks each one. This can be explained by her trusting in the Force and instincts, but as stated earlier on in this video, Rey was never trained to trust her instincts and reach out for the Force. It becomes a bigger problem later on. For the next section of the fight, the environment is put to great use. Trees are cut and the land shifts as the resistance destroys the planet. Rey wields the lightsaber with two hands for the most part, 
She attacks once or twice with one hand and climbs around holding the saber with one hand. It is a problem at times, but it is not that prominent. Finally, the two lightsabers lock and Rey is pushed back against the crack in the surface. Struggling to defend herself, Kylo takes the opportunity to talk to Rey. He tells her that he can teach her the ways of the Force. Rey reacts to hearing about the Force as something new. It appears that she didn't know that she was using it or had it this whole time. When she used the Jedi mind trick or Force pull, she didn't know she was using the Force? Which raises the question, what did she think she was doing? Was she just asking the guard to release her and just reaching out with her hand, expecting the saber to magically fly into her hand? This one scene makes her actions appear illogical and coincidental. Returning to the fight, Rey closes her eyes and reaches out to the Force with her mind. This is important to note when going into The Last Jedi. She calls upon the Force, ducks under Kylo's saber and attacks him holding the saber with one hand. There is a really bad moment of editing here when Rey goes from facing Kylo who's on the right side of the screen to attacking him and pushing him backwards, but if Kylo is on the right side of the screen, he would be pushed back into the hole which opened not too long ago. It's even worse when Rey is filmed attacking Kylo from the right side of the screen to the left side. It's breaking a very simple camera rule and breaks up the continuity of the fight. The characters have essentially swapped positions on screen without any explanation. It is assumed that the fight caused them to move around, but without it being shown, it's an error in editing and cinematography. As the two continue, Kylo is now being pushed back. Rey's attacks are fierce and powerful. She manages to cut Kylo's leg, causing him to fall. Off balance, he takes a wild swing, which Rey dodges and follows by stabbing Kylo in the shoulder. He staggers back, allowing Rey to swing at him, which he dodges, but he's hit by her kick. Kylo once again stands up and swings wildly. This time, Rey grabs onto his arm and the two lock onto each other's arms. It's an iconic shot that every lightsaber fight needs. As both of Kylo's shoulders have been hurt, it's understandable that his lightsaber would be pushed towards the ground, while Luke's reigns high. Ultimately, Rey slashes down towards Kylo's lightsaber, damaging it, then slashing at Kylo's face, leaving him with a long scar across his face. This is another callback to his grandfather, Anakin Skywalker who had a scar on his face, albeit that scar wasn't obtained in a lightsaber battle and was much smaller. The fight ends as the land between the two is broken up. Discussing the fight, both protagonists managed to damage their opponents. Given that Kylo was seriously injured by Chewie's bowcaster, there's breathing room there. However, Rey actually loses to Kylo until she taps into the force and something changes, somehow allowing her to injure him twice, kick him, and then cut his face. That does not make any sense. It takes the power of a lightsaber and reduces it to nothing. For episode 9, since Kylo is the main bad guy now, he should simply be shot by Chewbacca's bowcaster, then Rey can come in and beat him. There's no sense of drama as he has already lost to her in the first part of this trilogy. Rey has no obstacles to overcome. The writers explained why Rey could fight against Kylo with such proficiency, stating that Rey downloaded Kylo Ren's training from his mind when she managed to probe it even though she doesn't know how to use the force. It's a lazy excuse which opens up many issues with previous movies. Could Luke not probe Obi-Wan or Yoda's minds with their permission and learn everything about the Force and Yoda's roughly 900 years of training like that? It's just lazy writing used to explain why Rey could win the fight. From a lightsaber fight perspective, the fight is average at best. There are a few issues with it, but the ones it has are big ones. In any of the films George Lucas had a hand in, the fights consist of better character development during the fight and proper editing. In The Phantom Menace, written and directed by George Lucas, Qui-Gon Jinn takes a moment in the battle to meditate, showing him as one who trusts the Force and is of a calm state of mind. Darth Maul paces around, urging to continue the fight, and the young Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi stands at the ready, hoping to quickly rejoin the battle. Similarly, the lightsaber battle in The Empire Strikes Back features Darth Vader physically imposing himself on Luke, leading him down certain paths into a trap. Vader also uses Force abilities in the fight as to test Luke and catch him by surprise. All our concepts or ideas are missing from the fights in The Force Awakens. From a story perspective as well, the fight in The Force Awakens would have made more sense for Kylo to win, giving our protagonist something to overcome. But as explained in my previous video, Rey is not written to be a compelling character which faces challenges. As a fighter, Finn's biggest problem is that he uses a lightsaber relatively easily. Although he can use melee weapons, a lightsaber is in a different league. Calling back to George Lucas's ideas, They were very powerful. They had a lot of energy in them, and so that was you. You know, you worked with them as if they were heavy. So that, because when they crashed together, they you know, made these big explosions and all kinds of things. 